Good day, friends. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a very important topic uh, for us urologists when you get to this as a theoretical questions and MCQs, EMQs, and whatnot, and also on your exams, huh? on your neat exams and everything. Is it BPH? We now have a plus of the prostate. Okay. So let me share my screen. Okay, fine. So this, this is a big issue. Okay, this is a uh, big thing. And with that, I'll give you a short uh, uh, treatise on what is TOR syndrome. Okay, so to begin with, uh, uh, basically the definition is benign hyperplasia of prostate. What does it mean? Hyperplasia means an increase in the number of cells. Okay, so previously when we are residents, we used to term benign hypertrophy of the prostate, but McNeil, who is the legend in the prostatic literature, he says it's not the increase in the size. You know, when you go to the gym, na, when you do bicep exercises on this uh, pull-up dumbbells, you in cause hypertrophy of a biceps. It looks very good, but fine. But for prostate, it is not the increase in the size of the cell. It is increase in the number of the cells. This can happen because there is increase in the proliferation of the cells. To begin with, we have the stromal proliferation, later on the glandular proliferation of this one. And second, there is lack or this is stoppage in apoptosis or the programmed cell death. So the old cells are also there, the new cells are also being produced. So ultimately we have what is, have, what is known as a benign hyperplasia of the prostate. Okay, now what is the prostate looks like? It's, it's basically just not the walnut-like organ, 25 grams weight, just below your urinary bladder. It have different types of lobes. We have the two lateral lobes and it, it inside, just cut sections, the coronal section. So your lateral lobe, we have this opening of the, opening of the prostatic ducts, prostatic ducts, why? Look at lateral lobes, we have this transitional zone over here. First of all, it's a stroma, it's a stroma which forms. And later on, I said, it's the glands which forms. Why? Because as we age, our testosterone gets converted to by 5-alpha reductase within the prostate to DHT or dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone decreases in the stromal part of the prostate. Now, it also testosterone will be converted by another enzyme known as aromatase, peripheral conversion as I say to estrogen. What will estrogen do? Will increase the glandular component. So the glandular component and the stromal component increases in both of this benign hyperplasia of the prostate. So what will happen? The transitional zone is the site of the PPH nodules. Okay. Normally prostate has central zone, the peripheral zone. The peripheral zone is 65%. We come to this. Peripheral zone is 65%. And the transitional zone is normally 10% of the gland. But with as we age, as we have more DHT, more estrogen, less amount of testosterone, the whole balance gets deranged. What we have is increase the size in the transitional zone. Okay, that's very important. Increase in the size of the transitional zone. So as the transitional zone increases, we have come, we have this glands which are opening up this, this, these are the small prostate ducts. Okay, these are the small prostate ducts, the lateral lobe. Now we have an anterior lobe also, and we have the medial lobe. We'll come to what is the central zone. Central zone lies just behind the transitional zone, and if it increases the subcervical glands that are there, the increase in size will cause a medial lobe hypertrophy, like a ball valve. So whenever you compress, the ball valve increases and it compresses. So uh, old old person, he goes to the loo, he compresses, compresses, he just strains, strains, he can't urinate. Then he gets fatigued and, and, and he just goes into tiredness and then he urinates. So what it really happens when it strains the ball valve action of the median lobe compresses the urethra, or the bladder neck. And when it's and it release of the tension, it comes comes back, shrinks back. That's the that's one of the reasons of having this uh, ball valve obstruction. Okay, this is how it looks from above the prostate urethra. It looks above and all this all these urethral glands being training. Okay, now this is the fascial relationship. You have to know when we are thinking about prostate cancer and all this prostatectomy, radical prostatectomies. What we know is that there are three types of capsules. What is the true capsule? Is there any other glands? False capsule is basically formed by the visceral layer. So these are something called the pelvic fascia, and it coats upon this prostate. So it's a visceral layer, and the space between the false capsule and the true capsule actually contains the prostatic sinuses. The neurovascular bundle, or to say, surgical capsule is caused by the adenomatous tissue, which increases in size and compresses upon the non-adenomatous non part of the gland, or you can say upon the urethra, urethra, the urethra. So it becomes a surgical capsule. Okay, we come to this. We come to this. What is that? I mean, what is definition? Definition: non-cancerous increase in the size of the prostate gland, which involves hyperplasia. First stroma to start with, then epithelial cell. With the formation of a large fairly discrete nodules in the transitional zone, the process will push on and narrow the urethra. Now, this is what really happens. Let me tell you, this is the picture. I said 
peripheral zone 65 percent central zone 25 percent 10 percent normally is the but this increases in size as the patient ages because dhd increases because uh, estrogen increases and it compresses upon it it acts a surgical capsule is more over here it compresses upon the urethra it stretches the urethra it narrows down the it makes it a slit and actually now there's this is concept of the prostate urethral angle as it stretches now the whole angulation the angulation this is a lot of angulation being created the normal is a straight fellow and they can angulate it so the patient who having 25 gram prostate have a blood out obstruction because of this increase in angulation caused by the surgical capsule pressing upon the urethra. So in this patient, if we do a blood and section or what is known as TUIP, transurethral incision of the prostate, make it just a small incision with a B Collins knife, uh, I'm sorry, with a BNI knife. Yeah, it's a Collins knife, right? right. With a Collins knife or a hot knife in the uh, prostate capsule in the midline, then just opens up, opens up, the, the angle becomes normal. That's it. So it's a histologic part. It's a basically histologic diagnosis. It's a histologic diagnosis. The polyphenol smooth muscle epithelial cell within the process smooth muscle process transition zone, and it's best part of the normal aging process. So what are the causes? I said it's a benign neoplasm, lack of fibro adenoma, or something like that. Okay, fine. So what are the secondary changes that happens? It happens is that they change the urethra it becomes a slit, and the exaggeration of this uh, normal curvature. All this is we've talked about, and ultimately, ultimately the change in the urinary bladder. What in the urinary bladder happens? So ultimately, the bladder will now try to press, press, compress, 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 to try to uh, act against the obstructive system. So when you go to the gym, you, uh, you uh, walk on the muscle and the bicep grows, and it looks like good cosmetically very happy. But the bladder compress, 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 the bladder detrusor becomes hypertrophic, not hyperplasia now, detrusor hypertrophy, because it's not very good for the bladder. Okay, so compress the hypertrophy, the vesicle detrusor, trabeculation, all this hypertrophy, circulation, and diverticulum formation, and the blood is total mess. Okay, then you have the formation of residual urine cystitis and calculus and all this secondary changes happens. Then next, 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 the urine. The bladder will not uh, will not uh, rupture right now. What will happen is that we try to the blood the urine is not coming out. Then the secondary pop up mechanism is that the ureter vesicle junctions. Now the so the ureter now the, the urine will go reflux in the kidneys and it will affect the kidneys. Now the kidneys go hydronephrotic reflux and the kidneys damage occurs. Okay, so you have obstructive uropathy. Next week comes the obstructive nephropathy with the creatine level ten seven patient goes into renal failure. That's very important. Okay. So the complications we have acute urinary retention, urinary tract infection, bladder stones, well, bladder damage, and ultimately the obstructive nephropathy. Now, what are the, how do you assess a patient? That's very important. How do you assess a patient? Assessment of the patient is by history. Uh, what is that's very important. One thing I'm, I'm going to tell you is BPH is a uh, histologic diagnosis. The patient doesn't come that I'm suffering from BPH. Please treat me. He comes with I'm having LUTs. What is LUTs? I'm having obstructive symptoms. I'm having storage symptoms, obstructive symptoms because I'm hesitant. I'm gonna, I just pass urine in weak stream. I have to strain to void. I just have this into a voiding after. Even after I pass urine, I feel that I have uh, my urine left in my bladder. That's one. That's that's, that's the voiding symptom. The obstructive. The, just called the BOO, bladder outlet obstruction. The patient comes with bladder outlet obstruction. That's a part of the last. That's secondary to be, that's prostatic enlargement. That benign prostatic enlargement, that's the historic diagnosis, obviously, after you cut the prostate study for perhaps is BPH. Now, they can also start talk with overactive symptoms or storage symptoms, or frequency origins in nocturia, or origin incontinence. So, LUTS is not specific for BPH. So, LUTS can happen with a female fellow. Uh, LUTS has BPH, but not BPH has LUTS. Patient will have a 100 gram prostate. He's a BPH, but he doesn't have any symptoms. That's very important. So, this is the history. Then you do a physical exam with the TRE. What is digital exam? Is that you ask the patient, I want to do I put a finger in your asshole, or that I take your want to take your consent, and I also have total privacy. Okay, ask the patient to go and to the loo and evacuate himself, come back, ask whether he has any painful rectal conditions or not, put him in a whatever position you have the left lateral position, and then with lubricated and gently, with a very gently lubricated finger, and then you do a digital rectal. What to find in a digital rectal examination is this. See the size, and size means uh, if the upper pore reachable is grade one, it's reachable, not reachable, wishy wise is grade two, not reachable because grade three. By weight, you can say by rough estimation, you can this all this size, all these uh, grades. Then you see the consistency, whether it's hard, such as malignancy, um, firm, such so as benign enlargement. Soft, okay, benign enlargement. So farm is wishy washy. Then you have to think what's the PSA like, something like that. And also fluctuant, uh, whether we are dealing with the prostatapsis or not. Rectal mucosa gliding fixed, 
surface smooth or it is a find some nodula nodula means because very important is prostate cancer develops in the so if you see if you go back to my that, that previous slide it's very important prostate cancer happens in the peripheral zone so to diagnose prostate cancer you have to take biopsies from the rectum and not from the urethra because from the urethra you take biopsy to transition which is very not a very good estimate of or doesn't give a very good estimate the patient has cancer or not so if you do a turp you may miss a patient who has cancer on the on the far uh, far peripheral so if we do a say, channel turp that's very important so for estimation of for biopsy you have to do a rectal transrectal biopsy not a transurethral biopsy that's one of the very basic concepts you have to understand okay that's one of the basic concepts you have to understand now then is uh, tenderness and the median sulcus see the what is the finger stall see the, the anal tone also and see the uh, the sacral sensation or the peri anal sensation also for your tra okay now now, then you do what the urinalysis to see whether uh, you have uh, hematuria with an infection and you do a PSA. PSA is serine protease and it's, it's basically uh, synthesized from the prostate. Uh, its main function is now some people ask you what are the functions of the prostate? Prostate basically is a secondary sexual organ. It has a component, it, it secretion forms a component of your uh, ejaculate and it gives zinc and, uh, and zinc and there's another uh, fructose for nourishment of your sperm. Okay, so process, you can't say process is a vestigial organ just like your appendix. Process it has some functions, but very less function. You can, you can you know, if you're a if you're a man you want surgery because you're intention carrying a cancer for a long time, you can jolly well go ask the urologist to chop up your process. Now, very important to tell you is the PSA is a serine protease which is present in the uh, synthesized by the prostate as the main function is. Is basically liquefies the, the jelly like uh, viscid jelly of the semen coagulum and it liquefies in five to ten minutes by this PSA. The thing is, PSA is actually a screening for prostate cancer. It also helps in for progression of disease. If a person has a PSA of more than four, you can think that he may be harboring prostate cancer screening study. Or if it has a 1.4 nanogram per tell, they can understand that even though the PSA is normal, even though it's clinically, it's clinically uh, DR is normal, even though every, every parameter is just your opinion enlargement, but this PSA is important because it signifies the progression of the disease. The patient can progress uh, in spite of medical treatment, go to surgery, have some have complications like this. Okay. Now you can then you have the urophlometry and you understand that obviously it comes later, it must be up the up on the later. You know, if you have a neurogenic patient, okay, so, uh, Parkinson, some patient having symptoms, you have contemplating surgery, where they will do good with surgery, then you have to do a urodynamic study. Medical management, we have five alpha reductase inhibitors, alpha uh, and uh, for uh, this thing, alpha, alpha reductase inhibitors. So stromal element to act on it is a five alpha reductase inhibitors and alpha blockers act on the epithelial components, the alpha receptors present in the sphincter area, prostate sphincter area. Now, what are the, the when medical treatment fails, you have the surgical treatment. What is surgical treatment? The gold standard is TURP. TURP is just you put in a resective scope and by and you put in this uh, irrigating fluids and you cut. Cut, but you use electric current and you cut under uh, uh, visual guidance. You have a telescope over here. You see the TV, TV monitor is also there, and you cut in the irrigation fluid. It's not a dry cut, you cut in the irrigating fluid. Okay. And uh, what does the irrigation fluids look like? It was isolated, electrically inert, non toxic, transfer, inexpensive, non hemolytic, all this stuff. And the most important thing is glycine. If you use water, it will cause severe hemolysis. But glycine 1.5% is the most, uh, is the irrigating fluid which is used in our practice. Now, it's very important. What is TOP syndrome? Then if you go, if, if you take too much, one hour, more than one hour, then there's high chance that you will open up from the prostatic sinuses, okay? Uh, so a lot of fluid will get sucked in. So this glycine, even though it is uh, isotonic or not very hypotonic, but there will be suction the, 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 because it's 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 in a high pressure. No? It just gets sucked in, in your blood fluids and it causes hypo hypervolemia and uh, dilution hyponatremia and hypospolarity. That that causes a lot of problems. Okay, so obviously there will be observed two ten percent of prostates, especially large prostates. The resection time more than one hour and. Uh, Obviously, and there, there will be hemolysis with water also. So this patient will have uh, have retinal visual disturbances, nausea, vomiting, headache, sudden. They can also have seizures. All the neurologic elements are due to NM. Uh, yes. So I'm sorry because of, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just, uh, the whole thing. Let me share the screen again, okay? Okay, fine. 
there was a break okay there was a break in so this is back in hypomagnesemia hypomagnesemia can cause this uh, uh, all this uh, all the symptoms of uh, encephalopathy like symptoms okay so basically the, what happens is glycine will convert in ammonia and hyperoxy all this different uh, symptoms but the most problem important problem is hyponatremia hyponatremia hypotension with bradycardia the hypotension with tachycardia occur with uh, hemorrhagic states so the patient goes into have a lot of blood loss but uh, hypertension bradycardia is high core on the patient is having this TRP, TRP syndrome. So the risk factors obviously is very important. High risk pressure is too high. I extended excessively distended bladder, the prostate bladder, the ball, you just cut up in the prostate capsule. So that these are two things that has helped us uh, to prevent uh, TUR syndrome is using bipolar, saline TURP, and laser prostate are using NS rather than glycine. So the less chance of this uh, hyponatremia is occurring. So if you have a TUR syndrome, the best thing, if you contemplate giving my last injection, or if you uh, just correct uh, the hyponatremia, you know, hypertonic saline, uh, if the uh, in a, a sodium level is very low, then uh, or too much rapid uh, correction will cause central bond and myelinysis. Correct it slowly, then go to normal IV fluids and then go to oral fluids. Okay, so these are the important things you have talked about. I hope uh, these are the differential diagnosis also. The most important is hemorrhage and also marker infarction. Okay, so this is all. And uh, I think you like the lecture. So if you have any questions, just mail me. I've just given you the mail ID and you can also come to my website. It's also been mentioned and uh, see my, my other lectures as also. So in the meantime, uh, stay safe. And uh, and I hope I just give me feedbacks on how you like my uh, this teaching videos. Okay. Okay. So bye-bye.